simply the best. Hello, good afternoon and welcome to the Star Midday News. And coming up in the bulletin, fears of a looming constitutional crisis heightens amidst tension between the legislature and judiciary. As member of the Council of State and former GBA President Samuel Okujeto appeals to the National Peace Council to intervene. So she'll also intervene immediately because I said there are some of even classified us as if we are MPP, therefore not open. But the question, of course, is that it is our country. If there is a chaos in the country, we are all losers. Meanwhile, governance expert Professor Bafwa Jimandia warns fears over the constitutional crisis may materialize if deliberate actions are not taken to mitigate it. We avoid uh, constitutional crisis. When Parliament meets tomorrow, and suppose the NDC defies the decision or the Speaker defies the decision of the Supreme Court, that is what I think we have to work towards avoiding. Also in the bulletin, High Court dismisses Bernard Mourner's bid to overturn Electoral Commission's disqualification, but the disqualified PNC flag bearer insists the decision is detrimental to multi-party democracy. Clearly. This is a vitiation of justice. Clearly, clearly, it appears that there's some attempt to undermine multi-party democracy. And later on, education authorities in the eastern region worried over rising trend of skin bleaching among students in second cycle institutions, as report in the case that thirty percent of students are engaged in the practice. Details of these stories and many more, including sports. All coming up in the next 30 minutes. Stay tuned in. Star News is coming to you live on Ultimate 106.9 FM in Kumasi, Empire 102.7 FM in Takrade, Zeps 95.9 FM in Zebila, Nisim 100.1 FM in Lamshao, My Star Radio in the USA. Also live on Facebook on Star 1035 FM and on starfm.com.gh around the world. This is Star 103.5 FM, Star News. Informed, in depth, in touch. You're welcome once again to the Star Midday News on Star 103.5 FM here in Accra to the details of our stories. Now we're starting off with issues with the legislature and judiciary. And member of the Council of State and former president of the Ghana Bar Association, Samuel Okujito, has appealed to the National Peace Council to intervene in the seeming impasse between the legislature and the judiciary. Now, the decision by the Supreme Court to stay the order of the Speaker, Alban Bagman, has heightened fears of a looming constitutional crisis addressing the media uh, leader of the NDC group in Parliament, Dr. Cassia Latoforsen, stated that his side will use the new, their new status of majority to abolish the E-Levy and betting tax. The NDC MPs in Parliament now constitute the majority caucus in line with the standing orders of Ghana's Parliament. Yeah. Yeah. Fellow countrymen and women, the NDC now constitute the majority caucus in this eight Parliament. We will jealously protect our new majority status and will not bow, retreat, nor surrender our lawfully end status. Yes. Yes. We have never hidden our position that we are in Parliament for the ordinary people of Ghana. It is indeed true that we will use our new majority numbers to benefit Ghanaians by introducing private members' bill to remove the e-levy and to reduce the suffering of the people of Ghana. Yes. It is also true that we will use our new majority to remove the betting tax and other nuisance taxes. Yes. 
You had there the leader of the NDC group in parliament, Dr. Cassiel Atoforsen. But this has been raging. Everything started on Thursday. Let's tell you how everything has unfolded. There's more in this report. It all began when former minority leader and MP for Tamale South, Harun Idrisun, declared the minority NDC's intention to initiate a process to evoke Article 97 for Parliament to declare the seats of four MPs as vacant following an alleged crossing of carpets during a political rally in Tamale. On Tuesday, the Parliament of Ghana will reconvene. And when it reconvenes, I am very certain that Parliament and Ghana will go through a major constitutional test. And that constitutional test is that the NDC minority must become the majority from Wednesday next week. However, this was met with stiff opposition by the majority in Parliament prompting the leader of government business and MP for Ifutu, Alexander Fenyomarkin, to seek legal interpretation at the Supreme Court. Some of these controversies are better settled by the courts. So in my capacity as the majority leader, I have filed a writ at the Supreme Court. Parliament has been duly served. Then, Parliament resumed sitting after a long break on Tuesday, October 15, 2024, ahead of the much-anticipated decision to be made by the Speaker. This ensued as MPs on both sides engaged in a heated debate. Would you, would you, would you remain quiet for me to argue? I listened to him in silence. I listened to him in silence. Would you remain quiet? That is democracy. You would have to be quiet and listen to me, and you will listen to me. This is a legal argument. I'm a Kofibua. This is a legal argument. You have to listen. After listening to arguments from both sides, Speaker Abang Babin adjourned sitting for deeper reflection over the matter before a final ruling. The final day came and a ruling was delivered. By the notification of the polls, the following members of parliament have by their actions vacated their seats in parliament. The members are Honorable Peter Yao Kwachi Aka, two, Honorable Andrew Amwako Asiyama, three, Honorable Kojo Asante, and finally, Honorable Cynthia Mamile Morrison. These MPs cannot be allowed by law and my good self to continue to pretend to be representing people that they don't believe in and they don't have any loyalty for in this house any longer. Certainly, the speaker's ruling did not sit well with the majority who described the move as evil and staged a walkout. Mr. Speaker, may I finish with respect? All what you said are wrong, so Mr. I Speaker, cannot continue to allow Mr. you Speaker, to keep on Mr. misleading Speaker, the house. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, please, if, if, if you think that this is your house and you didn't want us to talk, so be, Mr. Speaker, And I am sure that on Tuesday we will deal with this matter politically because this is a political decision. Nonetheless, the NDC caucus in Parliament at a press conference on Sunday, October 20, 2024, vowed to protect its newfound majority status come Tuesday when the House resumes. Fellow countrymen and women, the NDC now constitute the majority caucus in this eighth Parliament. We will jealously protect our newly majority status and will not bow, retreat, nor surrender our lawfully end status. So that is how far we have come since Thursday when uh, the speaker gave that ruling uh, indicating that three uh, on the side of the NPP and then one on the side of the NDC had vacated their seats by virtue of their decision to go either independent or um, going on the ticket of a party. Well, there are many concerns uh, that with the entrenched positions taken, it will definitely have some implication 
on governance as well. Well, member of the Council of State and former president of the Ghana Bar Association, Samuel Kujitua Blackwa, says although the NDC side does not have a case, the National Peace Council should intervene to avert a bigger crisis. He spoke to me on the Morning Star. I think the Peace Council should also intervene immediately. Are you getting the picture? Yes. Yes, that's what I'm thinking. Because I said there are some of even classified us as if we are MPP, therefore not open. But the question, of course, is that it is our country. If, if there is a chaos in the country, we are all losers. And sometimes I even mm. want to say, you don't, know, you don't know who will perish in the process. We don't know who will perish in the process. But you know, some people can lose their lives in the process. So let's just be cautious and realize that we have a country and we need to protect that country, no matter what. Mm. So a cool, cool head is required in this matter. So just let them be cautious. But I say I'm appealing to all the chiefs, the, uh, what's his name, this council and all that. Everybody should try and see intervention in the country to talk to them, to stop the quarry, wait until they go and present their matters in court. They let court is ruling. And as I said, the ruling is made and you disagree with it. So you heard there the a council of state member and former president of the Ghana Bar Association, Samuel Okujeto there. Well, we've also been speaking to governance expert, a former, a former UN advisor on governance, Professor Bafo Ajimandia. He is warning that the fears of a constitutional crisis may materialize if deliberate actions are not taken. The, the laws and yes. means of, of, of the problem. What we have to, the question is, what do we do to maintain sanity in our politics? What do we do to avoid... Uh, constitutional crisis when parliament meets tomorrow and suppose the NDC defies the decision or the speaker defies the decision of the Supreme Court. That is what I think we have to work towards avoiding because when it comes to that, then we are bringing our democracy, uh, democratic governance to some kind of uh, screeches. And I don't think we deserve that after 32 years or so of uh, Republic, uh, this could be the biggest challenge. That is to say, if the threats we've been hearing were to be carried out, it would create a major political logjam for all of us. You had the governance expert, Professor Bafwa Jimandia. Let's go over the telephone line and speak to the executive director of the Africa Center for Parliamentary Affairs, Dr. Rashid Rahman. He joined us over the telephone line. Uh, thank you so much, Doc, for joining us here on the Star Midday News. Thank you for having me. We have a problem on our hands come tomorrow in Parliament. Yes, we do. And how can this be fixed? That is the moment uh, we need our, our elders in our society. Chiefs, the clergy, the imams, the pastors the National Peace Council. I mean, some of us have been talking about this since yesterday. I'm pleased to hear that now at least the Peace Council has moved into action. We are hearing from the Office of the National Chief Imam. Um, but I think ultimately uh, my call is for the three leaders of the three legs of our government, the judiciary and parliament, to try and uh, some condition. Mm. Our democracy has never faced a, a test as this one. Mm. Not at a point in our history where this matters like this can be dealt with by the institutions and the structures that we have. This when the first tests such as this one, the institutions are resilient then that mm. they can they can deal with these matters. But we are not there yet. And we saw how the military walked in on January sixth. Mm -hmm. Um we might see a repeat of that. And let me see the worry is that we are living in a time when trust 
in democracy and trust in the ruling elite is at its lowest across many countries. I mean, whether in Africa or even beyond. Mm. How even in Europe, there is a rise in right-wing parties because people are saying, you know, the business as usual has not helped. In our region, mm. we see what's happening, our northern neighbors. Um, so I think these are all kind of important matters that we have to take notice of mm. and try to insulate our democracy uh, so that the little faith and trust that people have um, will be at least put. Tomorrow, no. tomorrow, anybody who thinks, you know, these two sides are going to raise up should think again. If they are left alone to their to their fate, to determine who sits where, um, people should think again. Hmm. And you you touched on the subject of um, the military being deployed. Um, the minority, well, the NDC group, for instance, say that they have. <laughs> you know, it's now difficult. You know, it's so difficult to address. Them. Yes. Yeah. Now we don't have their. All majority. So, so at this point, we refer to them as NDC caucus and MPP caucus. Yes, so yes. for the NDC caucus, you have indicated firmly that um, they have picked some ink, some hints or intelligence that yes. there are plans to deploy the military. Now, it's not confirmed. But if um, something like that again is done again, what kind of signal does it send? Especially when the first time it happened, there's been no repercussions and nobody has taken the blame for it. Well, you know, it, it the signal it might send is that, you know, if we are not careful, uh, maybe the the military might say, you know, the civilians that are in charge of managing our affairs, because look, parliament is supposed to be the forum, exactly, who has replaced military regimes. Because military regimes come about because civilian processes for dialogue and disagreement to... That Article 99 is very clear in its language. It says clearly that the High Court is responsible for determining whether or not a seat has become vacant. That is a structural issue. Then 33 says that, look, when it comes to these matters, leave it to the high court. Let them be the ones to enforce it. Then you go to 130. 130 is the one that deals with the original jurisdiction of the Supreme Court to interpret the provisions of the Constitution. And that provision also says that it is subject to the powers earlier given by the same Constitution to the high court to interpret and enforce fundamental human rights. So it baffles my understanding of what the Supreme Court should be doing for them to jump into Article 97, because 99 is so clear in its language that I don't see why the court will make that mistake and, and say that, you know, they should have jurisdiction to deal with this matter. You had the, the Member of Parliament for Boku Central, Mahama Yarga. Let's go back onto the telephone line. Oops, we lost him. Uh, we're going to finish our conversation with Dr. Rashid Rahman, uh, but we can move on if we are not able to uh, reach him. We just heard from the uh, Boku Central MP, uh, Mahama Yarga, saying that the ruling of the Supreme Court was a mistake. Um, we'll also be speaking to a private legal practitioner, Justice Abdullahi, uh, to pick his thoughts in relation to this one. Well, let's try one more time if we have members of themselves have done things that have weakened the institution. Hmm. If the executive orders to come into parliament... 
Doc, if you could kindly reposition, the connection to you keeps um, breaking intermittently. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes. You were saying that a lot of things have happened under this current parliament that weakens its own authority. Yes, exactly. Including the speed with which people run to the Supreme Court mm. to act parliament uh, to get involved to to ask the Supreme Court to get in full involved in parliamentary affairs. In parliamentary affairs. And if you have the military coming in again, mm. maybe if the executive is not careful, they might also be casualties of this uh, military kind of uh, interference mm. in our democratic affairs. The military has no role, has no space near anything that is our democratic space. Is, is that near anything? Near anything related to our democratic space. All right. Yes. We are supposed to be making sure that our democracy is protected. Right. Okay, Doc. This, yeah. The, the civilians have to find a way to resolve their differences. Thank you so much for speaking to us. We're grateful for your time, sir. You had to speak to Dr. Rashid Draman, he's executive uh, director of the Africa Center for Parliamentary Affairs. Let's quickly find out what you've been saying on social media in relation to this particular issue raging since Thursday. Throughout the weekend, there's been legal education, legal arguments here in the gymnastics and all. Look, <laughs> some of us are even confused at this point in time. Uh, Nanama Akwa is here. Nanama, what are people talking about on social media in relation to this? What are they saying? Well, now the majority of them are saying that they should leave it and go to the polling stations. When we go to Facebook, Nana Kwesi says, Master, you can't win against the judiciary. Stop wasting your, our time. You are called honorables. They are my lords. The gap is very wide. Jojo says, if the law is... Um, sorry, let me take that again. If this, the law of the standing orders in Ghana's constitution doesn't work, then no law in Ghana will work. Daoud says the speaker didn't interpret the constitution. He only followed precedents. Separation of powers will play a crucial role here. Prince says, honestly, NDC and their leaders are not serious one bit. While your fellow members are seriously campaigning for a decisive majority in parliament in the next election, you're here fighting for a majority that has ended its work. This shows the NDC has already lost the election. I pity their followers. They are going through a lot. We move over to Instagram. Um, Juan says, Dear Atto Fawson, if the NDC have any dreams of coming to power, then the betting and e-levy taxes should be maintained before coming to power. No need calling for it to be abolished. You have no idea how it will help when NDC comes to power. Agnos says, very interesting. Thank you so much, Honourable Majority Leader. Um, then we have our last comment. Okay. On um, Instagram, go and fight in Parliament tomorrow. We are waiting. Tomorrow is Tuesday. So let's see what happens. Stick and stay with us and we will give you more. Now, nah, back over to you. Thank you very much, Nanama Aqua, bringing us um, the reactions on social media to this particular issue. Uh, let's move away from Parliament to spend a, a significant amount of time there. Let's go to the court because the High Court has dismissed an application filed by Bernard Mona, the flag bearer of the People's um, National Convention, PNC, seeking to overturn the Electoral Commission's decision to disqualify him from the presidential election. The ruling delivered earlier today uh, leaves Bernard Mona without a legal pathway to contest his disqualification, creating additional challenge for the PNC as the December elections draw near. Well, let's hear from a uh, lawyer for Bernard Mona, Harold Atuguba, uh, who says, though they respect the decision of the court, do you still disagree with it? Once the Electoral Commission is not the Attorney General, it's not the police service, what they ought to have done, based on Article 23, that is based on administrative justice, is that they should have referred the matter to the police, the forensic unit of the police service, to determine whether these signatures were deceived. How long does it take you to do this? About 48 hours. But the court, the court agrees with the commission. The judge says after looking at the four, we also came to the same conclusion. So the judge is allowed to reach a decision based on evidence. And so the judge could have easily appointed a signature expert to come to court and determine the veracity or otherwise of the electoral commission's claims. That is the judge find that. In this case, he thought that his own uh, view 
or looking at the case will come to a conclusion. So the reason why you are to do the case between two people is that even though you are the judge, it gets to things that you are not nuanced in. Even though he's a judge, he is not a forensic signature expert. If you look you heard there uh, Harold Atuguba. He is the lawyer for Bernard Mona. Well, Bernard Mona himself is, has been speaking. He has described the High Court decision as an attempt to undermine multi party democracy. Clearly, this is a vitiation of justice. Clearly, clearly, it appears that there's some attempt to undermine multi party democracy and the festering of dissent within our democratic processes. What my lawyer has just said is testimony that the government of our issue was not looked at by the judge. We came to court on Exhibit 4. We only drew attention that Exhibit 2, which was written on the 13th, indicating the specific pages that the Electoral Commission claimed were incomplete particulars of our supporters. When the Electoral Commission drew our attention to those specific pages, we corrected them and resubmitted same. My General Secretary is here. He's you had there um, Bernard Mona. He's a flag bearer of the PNC. Uh, who has been disqualified from contesting the presidential elections by the Electoral Commission. Let's now bring you the very latest in the world of sports. And um, Jones Haji is here. Uh, Jones, good afternoon to you. What's in sports? All right, we'll start on a sad note for Ghana's beach soccer team because the Black Sharks have lost their second game against Morocco at the ongoing Beach Soccer African Cup of Nations in Egypt. The game ended 5-2 in favor of Morocco. And it's now back-to-back -back defeat for Ghana at the Beach Soccer Afcon. And they've scored five goals, considering 11 in two games. The defeat now means that Ghana has been eliminated regardless of the outcome of their final game. Two Kumasi Asante Kotoko, they have moved second place on the Ghana Premier League table after defeating current champion Samatex FC by a goal to nothing at the Linkley Sports Stadium. Kotoko, who have an outstanding game, are points behind Bibiani Gold Stars and could go top if they win their game against Ligon Cities. And coach of the side, Dr. Prosper Nate Ogum, says there is always pressure on the team. Everywhere we play, there is pressure. Because the expectations of the supporters are always high. So it's not only at Babayara. Here too there's pressure. But I think we have been able to manage it very well. Yes. Coach, another congratulation. Uh, coach. Yeah, I think that uh, in the second round, basically we still augment the team in, in departments that we think that we need to augment, we need to strengthen. So definitely we'll do that. If you, if you look at our team squad, we have a uh, lesser number and we need to augment it. All right, that'll be all for sports. My name is Jones Aji. Thank you very much, Jones, A to the D to the Z to the I. <laughs> Jones Haji bringing us the very latest in the world of sports. Now, just before we go, very concerning news coming from the Eastern Region. And the Eastern Regional Director of Education, Ivia Santua Ouz, who has expressed concern over the rising trend of skin bleaching among students in second cycle institutions in the region. According to her, as many as 30% of students in some institutions have been found to be bleaching their skin. Describing the situation as unacceptable and caution against the practice. Now, despite uh, the prohibition by the Ghana Education Service on bleaching among students across all second cycle institutions nationwide, enforcement has been ineffective. As no student found culpable has been punished. Avia Santua Wusu was speaking at the launch of the 25th anniversary celebration of the Pentacle Senior High School in Koforidia. Go to some institutions. <laughs> And you, you can see clearly not less than 30% of students are bleaching. Both boys and girls. This happening, yes. And you look at their power, you look at their hand, it's face volume. What virtue are you cultivating for yourself? When you vacate and you go to school, what do you do? You are carrying the name of the school when you go home. So if 25 years of this great institution, we are all here, we have gathered here to launch 
to celebrate the school, then we should carve a good virtue for ourselves. Definitely a worrying trend coming from the eastern region and different parts of the country. You heard that the Eastern Regional Director of Education, Ivy Asantua, was expressing concern about the rising trend of skin bleaching among students in the second cycle institutions. Very worrying. That's how we wrap up today's edition of the Star Midday News on Star 103.5 FM. For more news, do log on to starfm.com.gh. My name is Nadi Deteti. Bye-bye. Have a good afternoon.